This video is going to be about combinations. This is like one step more complicated from permutations. So we're going to first introduce the choose function, which is going to be the um, function and notation we will use to represent the number of combinations, just like we're often interested in counting permutations, the number of combinations We'll go through three examples, and then we'll offer a quick conclusion to just kind of place this work in the broader context of counting. So choose, as the function is often called. Often, the order of selection is not important. And instead, interest is in the sequence defined by the elements it contains. So that is, let's put it into context for what we've been looking at already. Permutations, if A one, A2, if the sequence A1, A2 is different than A2, A1, then we say order is important. So that was the case for permutations. The order of the elements is literally defining the sequence itself. A1, A2 is different than A2, A1. So that would be like if you had two positions to fill, but those positions were labeled. Then certainly if you put K and B into one of them, that would certainly be a different presidency than if it was filled the other way around. So their order matters. OK. Let's try, just because I'm running out of space, but I would have liked to put it on the same page. But oh well. Combinations. If A1, A2 is the same as A2, A1, then we say order is not important. So there, it doesn't matter if we go A1, A2 or A2, A1 we essentially have the same sequence. So let's just try a quick example. Consider the number of ways in which we could get two heads in five flips of a fair coin. Well, in that case, we might have heads, heads, tails, 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 and heads, tails, heads, tails, tails. So here, when I say order doesn't matter, these two um, sequences are essentially similar because they get to heads in each sequence of five flips. 
I don't really care where the position of heads shows up as long as I get two heads in the sequence total. Okay, so the question is, how many number of ways can we get two heads in five flips? And so the answer, and you can imagine there's other ways to get this, and the answer looks like this in the world of math. Five choose two. This is the notation for five choose two. In LaTeX, you will write out curly brace five slash choose two curly brace. So let's put that in dollar signs just so you know. But more stuff might go in the dollar signs here. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Okay, this is defined to be 5 factorial over 2 factorial times 3 factorial. So we have 5 over 2, and there's no division symbol there or anything. That's just 5 hovering over 2 with big parentheses around it. Is equal to 5 factorial divided by 2 factorial times 3 factorial. So I argue that 5 factorial divided by 3 factorial kind of makes sense. Because when you work out the math, that's really just 5 times 4. And so as you're essentially looking at, there are 5 positions for which the first head could go. Times, and then next, there are 4 positions for which the second head could go. So 5 factorial over 3 factorial is just 5 times 4 and you're just filling in the positions that the heads could possibly go, and then you're kind of filling in the tails and the rest of the spaces. Dividing by this 2 factorial is a little bit harder to see, but what you're supposed to see is you can order the heads themselves in two different ways. So that would be like marking 1 and 2. And now imagine you could order these two heads themselves in two factorial ways. Since we're going to count h1 or h2 the same as h2 or h1, then we want to divide by, we want to get rid of, we want to reduce the number of ways we could um, count these combinations because h1, h2 is going to be the same for us as h2, h1. So this remaining 2 factorial is to get rid of the extra number of ways we could permute the heads themselves. Okay, so let's jump into a more formal definition of choose. We will say the number of unordered arrangements is called a combination of n elements taken k at a time. And we write it out, n choose k, and this is equal to n factorial over n minus k factorial times k factorial. We need k to be less than or equal to n, otherwise this isn't defined. We write this out as n space slash choose space k, curly brace, in LaTeX. And in R, we would write choose as a function n comma k, where you have to fill in the integers um, for what you want.
Okay, let's try an example. Five card poker consists of five cards drawn without replacement from a standard deck of 52 playing cards. The number of possible five card hands in five card poker is 52 cards total, and you're interested in choosing five of them. And that's the way we'd read that, 52 choose five. Now, I did this calculation, but you can double check it in R. Two, five, nine, eight, nine, six, O's. So there is roughly two and a half million five card hands to be chosen in five card poker. Hence, poker is fun because you don't know which of those two and a half million hands you're going to get. Okay, so hopefully that wasn't um, too difficult an example. Let's try another one. We're gonna keep it to five card poker because that makes for easy um, examples for uh, choose. We'll say how many ways can a five card hand consist of all spades in five card poker. Okay, so they immediately get a little bit more difficult. We are now interested in a specific suit. There are 13 cards in the suit spades, and we are interested in any five of those 13 cards. Okay, so theoretically, that's simply the answer, but I'm gonna add to this the fact that there are 39 remaining cards that are not spades, and we want zero of them. Now, this isn't gonna contribute anything to our calculation, so this is a right answer, just as much as 13 choose five was a right answer. But the reason I'm adding this in is because this helps us remember for more difficult future examples that if you're interested in five card hands where like two of them are spades and some other ones are not spades, then you're going to need to remember this extra bit that shows up over here. So this is the answer to how many five card hands consist of all spades. You should think of it as like choose suits first, and you want five of that particular suit, and then pick however many remaining cards you want in whatever way you want. There's 39 non-spades, and we want zero of them. Let's do one more example where we can maybe highlight the other cards that are of interest. So we'll say, how many ways can we get exactly three kings and two queens in five card poker? Okay, so here's where it gets a little bit trickier. We'll start with, 
there are exactly four kings. So there's four kings we could select from, and we want three of them. And there is exactly four queens, and we want two of them. Notice how we're then multiplying together. Here's our first three cards and our second three cards. So you know what I'm going to do is then add in. There are 44 non-king, non-queen cards, and we want zero of them. Let me draw that zero just slightly better so you recognize it as zero. I'm going to continue to try adding in this extra bit just so you remember that there are many different ways we can lay out these combination calculations, just like here we started with the first three cards and then the second card, and then some other stuff might follow, which defines the rest of your um, cards in your hand. In this case, three and two adds up to five, so these first two choose functions are going to give us all the uh, cards we have in our hand. I'm just adding this one in because I know it won't contribute anything to our calculations. And so um, this is here just as a reminder. So I'm going to put in a conclusion which says what we're doing here is trying to figure out how to count the number of elements in a set. We are counting the number of elements in sets, but we're defining the sets in ways you haven't thought of maybe before. So we're essentially figuring out methods to determine cardinality. Once we have the cardinality of sets, we can very easily calculate all sorts of probability questions. What we're essentially doing is just trying to count number of elements in sets. What we have been defining implicitly is various sets. Take, for example, a equal to a5 card hand of poker with all spades. Now this isn't proper mathematical notation, but what I'm trying to write down is the fact that A is a set where we're interested in the set of all five card, five card hands from five card poker, where all five cards are spades. Since there's more than five spades, there is many ways we could have five card hands consisting of all spades. So what we're doing is defining a set consisting of five cards, such that we might be interested in calculating the number of five card hands with all spades and dividing it by the no total number of five card hands. Once we compute such a fraction, we can then calculate the probability of a five-card hand of poker with all spades. And that is a calculation people are interested in this world. So let's write down one more set we considered in this example, just so we can continue this idea. A five-card hand with exactly three kings and two queens. Once we know how to calculate the number of five card hands with exactly three kings and two queens, we then have the cardinality of B. With the cardinality of B, we can calculate the probability of B. This has been our goal the whole time, is to figure out how to count the number of elements in sets so that we can calculate the probability of these sets. Combination is a super powerful technique that shows up in all sorts of different mathematical areas. This was a reasonable introduction as far as statistics is concerned.